Okay, let's do the factorizing problems. Um, the first type of factoring you do when you look at two um, terms like this is you look for things that are in both. You look for the highest, uh, the greatest common factor, and that is the biggest f uh, factor that goes into both. Well, the number 3 goes into 3 and it goes into 15. There's x's in both and there's y's in both. So 3xy is your greatest common factor. It sits out here. Now 3xy times x gives you 3x squared y. 3xy times minus 5y gives you the minus 15xy squared. And there you go. The next question, it's the same thing. It's 11xy goes into x cubed y. 11 goes into 11 and 44. There's an xy here, and there's xy that goes in here. So 11xy times x squared gives you the first thing, 11x cubed y. 11xy times minus 4 gives you minus 44xy. But you're not finished, because this is a difference of s squares. It's like a squared minus b squared, and it's a plus b, a minus b. If you multiply this out to FOIL on it, you get x squared minus 4. You see the, the big thing is there's your x squared. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, but the minus 2x is on the outside. The plus 2x on the inside, those products cancel each other. That's why there's no x's there. Let's try the next question. Well, this is a whole thing of factoring. I just like to think, put two brackets. The only way to get x squared is x times x. You've got two options with 6. It could be 1 times 6 or 3 times 2. Those are the factors. But we need the outside and the inside to give us 1. So it must be plus 3x minus 2x. The inside and the outside products combine to equal plus x plus 3. And positive 3 times minus 2, that works for minus 6. Let's just do one more here and we'll... Um, call it the, the factoring thing here. Now let's see here. Ooh, this is a little bit harder. You see you've got a couple of choices. It could be 1x and it could be 8x, or it could be 2x and 4x. Because I've done a lot of these, I sort of have the intuition that 4x and 2x is going to work. And then you try different combinations. It could be 15 times 1, but if you put a 15 there, you're going to get 60x. That's way too much. Or even 15, it's just 15 here is going to give you way too much. So it must be 3 and 5 somehow. Now, I just do the different combinations. I'm looking here. If I put 5 times 3, that gives me 15. I've got plus 10x, and then minus 3 times 4x is minus 12x. Well, that works. Plus 10x, minus 12x. That's minus 2x. Now, this one's a little bit harder. 5 times minus 3, that gives you minus 15. So when I do FOIL on this and I multiply out the four products, it works. The key thing is these two numbers here have to multiply to equal the last. Those are your choices, the last number. So all the products of 15. And that's why there's a 5 and 3 there. And the first two numbers have to multiply to equal the first term. And the outside and inside have to combine to equal this um, term right here in the middle. It always works like that. There's lots of other methods you can use, x methods and that, to, to factor. But I just look at it and go do the FOIL thing.